Hi, I'm Griffiths, and if you work hard enough, maybe one day you could be too. And I'm going to show you 23 context facts about heroes. Well, welcome to my room of knowledge where all the facts of the world are gathered. And I've got 23 great facts about the context of Heroes by Robert Cormier, which will be helpful for your GCSE English Literature, because there is, of course, a context element in that question. So here we go with number one. Fred Astaire was a very popular dancer, really massive movie star in the 30s, 40s and beyond, even into the 70s, he's a big figure. Uh, he is somebody who was remarkably agile, remarkably balanced, an incredible control of his body as he danced, and a huge, iconic figure. The Boston Red Sox are the baseball team in Boston, and they were a massive, successful team. They won the first ever World Series, they won five of the first 15 World Series, but then, in 1918, they traded their star player to New York. And that star player is fact number three, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was a brilliant player. Doesn't seem to be not that nice a bloke, but hey, can't have everything. He's traded to New York in 1918, and that begins the curse of the Bambino. The Bambino was one of his nicknames. Babe Ruth goes to New York, Boston's big rivals, and then New York, who up to this point have been a failure, suddenly become the best team in baseball, while Boston are cursed, they think. They don't win the World Series between 1918 and 2004. So the curse of the Bambino, Babe Ruth, leaving Boston Red Sox to go and play for the New York Yankees. The Plymouth. The Plymouth is a movie theatre. Okay? A cinema, like we have now, but cinemas tended to be a bit different in those days because they would have not just films, often they'd show two films in a go and have other things in them like the news and so you would go to the cinema maybe for a good few hours there was no television then, if you wanted to see the news instead of hearing it on the radio you'd watch it on the news and that news is our next fact the movie tone news, that was a newsreel a newsreel was basically a short news programme which was shown in cinemas F. Scott Fitzgerald one of the writers that's mentioned uh, by Francis in Heroes. F. Scott Fitzgerald was one of the great writers of the 20th century, although he died at the age of 44. And his book, The Great Gatsby, is seen as one of the greatest books of the 20th century. It tells the story of a man who has great wealth but isn't happy. He longs after a woman that he cannot have. Familiar, perhaps, of Heroes? Similar, perhaps? He's a false hero who seems to be perfect and wonderful, but isn't, again, think about it. How does that link in to heroes? Jack London. Jack London was another writer, and he wrote well, a number of short stories, some novels, most famous novels, books like White Fang and Call of the Wild, which are actually, the main characters are dogs. Uh, Call of the Wild, for example, the main character, Buck, is taken from the home where he lives and stolen, taken to Alaska, where he becomes a husky and he has to learn to survive. And he becomes somebody who can survive by losing his domesticated traits and becoming more wild. So again, maybe a, a hero who becomes successful by not acting heroically. Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway, well, and again, like Fitzgerald, seen as one of the great American writers, Hemingway developed a very punchy style of writing where he didn't really use many words, tend to use short words, short sentences, got straight to the point, uh, which Francis admires in his style of writing. Hemingway, a man who was a tough guy and who lived the life of the heroes he tended to write about. He, he was a volunteer ambulance driver and was injured in the First World War. He volunteered to fight in the Spanish Civil War. He also would box. He hunted wild animals. That's not nice. Uh, he would go deep sea fishing. He was, uh, shall we say, popular with the ladies. He liked a strong drink. All his main characters seemed to be like that. He loved bullfighting. 
his heroes tend to be very macho and tough and like you'd expect a hero to be but there's there's often an unhappiness about them there's often a, a, a artificiality and something you don't like about them as well so fitting in with the theme of heroes and of course Hemingway maybe wasn't quite what he seemed he acted tough perhaps to compensate for the fact that when he was a young boy his mother wanted a girl desperately and when he wasn't a girl she made him dress as a girl in dresses until he was about 11 so maybe there's deep lying vulnerabilities behind his tough guy image Rebecca. Rebecca is a book that is mentioned by Nicole. It's written by Daphne du Maurier and this has got out a love triangle. Again, think about the link to heroes. The main character marries a man but then finds that he and the rest of the people in his household are obsessed with his first wife who was said to haunt where they live. So uh, an uncomfortable and unhappy love triangle there, which is said to be based on Daphne du Maurier's real life, that she got married, but she was concerned that her husband was still obsessed with a woman that he, he knew before. So, yeah, they're clearly a link to the, the plot of, of Heroes, isn't there? The Marx Brothers. Oh, the Marx Brothers were a very famous comedy act in the 30s and 40s and uh, beyond to an extent. Uh, they made black and white movies, that, comedians, and when it's described to rec-centred workers as being like the Marx Brothers, that means they're completely chaotic. The Marx Brothers were Groucho, who was very much the, the witty, sharp one-liner, and the person who translates best his humour to modern jokes, always ready with sharp, short witticisms. Behind every successful man, there's a woman. Behind her is his wife. Time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. A book's the best friend you can have outside of a dog. Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. Harpo never spoke, played the harp beautifully and did lots of slapstick humour. Chico was another sort of roughhousing comedian, played the piano. And weirdly, Zeppo wasn't funny at all with a handsome bloke. And there'd always be like a romantic story where he'd meet a woman and he was like the sort of the Hollywood movie star type uh, amidst all the, the comedy. Fab fact, bonus fact about Zeppo, he invented a type of clamp which was used to hold the atomic bombs that were used by the American army when they dropped the bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in place. And those clamps are still used today in space when two ships dock together. Zeppo marks. Who knew? Dancing in the Dark, a popular song written in the 20s and still performed today actually by some fairly modern performers. Bing Crosby, who was a famous crooner, did a famous version of it in the 30s, which is probably what uh, is used in the book. Iwo Jima was a, is an island, it's part of Japan, it's a volcanic island and it was the site of a massively important battle in 1945 in the Second World War. The Americans win and get closer to mainland Japan. An iconic photograph is taken of the victorious American soldiers raising the American flag on the highest point in Iwo Jima, Mount Suribachi, by a photographer who was with the army called Joe Rosenthal. That photograph not only became the most reproduced image of the Second World War, but also was copied uh, in, a st in a statue in tribute to the Marine Corps which stands outside Arlington National Military Graveyard, which is just opposite the river from Washington. Milk Duds. Milk Duds are sweets. Fab facts about Milk Duds. The milk part of the name comes because they put a lot of milk into them, and the Duds come into the name because they're funny shapes. Uh, they initially wanted them to be perfectly round, but they found it was impossible to do it, so they were called Duds, things that don't work. But the scotch bits, well, surprise, surprise, they're bits of butterscotch and sweets. A drugstore. Now, in America, a drugstore is not somewhere where you can buy crystal meth. Instead, it's somewhere it would be part chemist. They would sell medicines and things like that, but they'd also sell other things. So it's almost like a, like a corner shop, but also a chemist. Bums. Bums 
are homeless people, or tramps, not actual backside. So please, when you think of Edna Bouchon, dressed as a, a bum on stage, she is not a bum, she is a homeless person. Ashcans. She dances around of ashcans. They're metal bins, basically. We used to have them until about 20 odd years ago in Britain. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is a bay in Hawaii, which is in the middle of the Pacific, but the Hawaiian Islands are part of America. It was where the Pacific Fleet was based for America, and it's the reason why the Americans joined the Second World War, because the Japanese Air Force launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor and destroyed half the American fleet. Unfortunately for them, they didn't destroy the whole American fleet because half of it was out of maneuvers, and so America was not as badly damaged as they hoped. But still, it was a massive disaster and shock to the American people. Shops. Not shops like we would describe it, although this is a phrase that isn't really used in America much anymore. A shop was a factory. So the comb shops and the button shops are factories, not shops. Tenements. A tenement is sort of a block of flats, usually a bit smaller and wider, if you like, than our British idea of a, a block and flat of flats. Uh, lots of them have been renovated and look nicer than maybe they were in the time of Heroes. If you ever watched Friends, they live in a, a tenement. Um, some weren't, and some tenements could be quite slum-like. St. Jude's. St. Jude comes up quite a bit. Um, variously thought to be, well, he's certainly an apostle. Some scholars think he was also Christ's brother. Pretty sure that his name wasn't Jude. His name, it seems, was Judas Thaddeus. But a couple of hundred years afterwards, when people were writing, they decided they didn't want to get mixed up with Judas Iscariot, who betrays Christ, so they shortened his name to Jude. He is the saint for the hopeless and despairing. So you could see maybe why he is used in Heroes. Carnival wrestlers. The Strangler is a carnival wrestler. So in those days, <laughs> there wouldn't be so much entertainment. Carnivals and travelling shows would come around, a bit like fairgrounds that we have now, that just come around certain times of the year. You know the one they have by Waterworld? That sort of thing. But they would have different things within them. And one of them would be maybe a boxing ring or a wrestling ring, and the carnival would have their own boxer or wrestler, and they would challenge people to come up from the audience to fight them and win a prize if they were able to win. Finally, jukebox. Do they still have jukeboxes? I don't know. Jukebox would be somewhere in a public place, a bar, perhaps, and there'd be lots and lots of records in them. Records were little round plastic discs that had music on them. A bit like CDs, but more breakable. A jukebox, you'd go up to it, you would select the song, push the buttons to pick it, and then it would play. So, there you go. Your fav contact facts about heroes.